Hi everyone, Anjita this side. Welcome back to AV Automation Hub. In this video, we will explore how to make post call and handle response using K6. So with K6, you can easily simulate post request and validate the response. The post calls are basically essential for sending your data to web servers such as submitting the forms or creating the resources. In today's video, we are going to cover these two topics. So first we will check how we can make a post call in Basic using a payload which is inside your test file and then the other scenario which we are going to cover is passing your payload from a different file and in both the cases we are going to validate our status code and response for the demo purpose i have a sample api which is a user's api using which you can create a user and in the response you can validate this is an additional id field now let's go to editor and start writing the code so for the demo purpose i have already created this template file so over here, I've imported HTTP from K6 HTTP so that we can make a post call. And then I've imported check because using check, we will perform the test validation. Then we have the options object inside which you can pass your load condition. So for example, check it for 10 virtual users and five seconds. So you need to pass the duration over here and I will pass it as five seconds. Now comes the export default function where you will write a code to make a HTTP post call. So how we can do that? using HTTP dot post, and then you have to pass the parameters. So in the previous video, we learned about get call. So in the get call, only URL was mandatory, but with the post call, we know we need to pass payload also. So with the post call, we will pass URL payload. And in case if you have any parameters, you can pass that also, but that's an optional field. And if you hover over it, you can also see the description. So over here, you can see the description. First one is URL, then the second one would be body and then parameters, fine. So what we will do, first of all, we'll create a variable for passing the URL. You can pass directly inside this HTTP.post or you can create a variable. So the cleaner way is to pass it in the variable and then use it inside your HTTP.post request. So what we will do, I will write over here const URL. So here we need to pass the endpoint. So endpoint we can copy from the postman. And let's paste it here. Then the next one is passing your payload. So we will directly pass inside it. Now let's pass URL and then the payload over here. So payload we can copy from Postman directly. So I'm not going to pass any additional parameters so we can keep it like this. So the next step is we'll perform some test validation. So for that, we need to store the response first. So I will pass it like this const response and then my response will be stored inside it. Fine. So in order to perform the test validation, we will use check and you need to pass your response and inside it you need to pass a meaningful description so we can pass status code validation so then we will use this response object to perform further validation so the further validation will be response dot status and then we are expecting it to be 201 so you can see over here this is 201 which means the resource got created that's why it's 201 so we are going to use the same status code so this is our basic test case for making a post call in k6 Fine. You are passing the URL, you are passing the payload, and then you are verifying the status code, the response. Now let's go to terminal and execute this test case. So in order to run the K6 test, you have to use the command K6 run and your test name, which is post api.js. And you would see in the logs, it is actually making call for 10 virtual users and for five seconds, you can see over here. And then we will see if there's any failure. So HTTP request failures 0%. And then if you scroll up, you can see the status code validation, which was our check and our check is 100 posts. So this validation is working fine for 10 virtual users and five seconds. Now what we will do, do one more validation. I will verify the response. So response ID validation. So we will check if the ID is present in the response or not. So for that, the same way I will use the response object and then Using the same response object, I will check the body. So earlier we were checking the status. Now we will check the body and we'll verify if it includes ID. So we can see from Postman also with every resource, there is new field getting generated, which is ID. So same thing we are going to validate here also. So let's go to terminal and rerun the test case. And if I rerun the test case, now we'll see two validations in the logs. So you see it got executed successfully. 10 virtual users, five seconds, and our HTTP request failure is zero post. And if we scroll up, you see, we have two test validation over there. One is status code and one is the response ID validation. And also the checks is 100%. So 
So that means our test validation is working fine. So apart from the load testing, you can also perform functional testing using Casex. So in that case, you need to pass virtual user as one. You can actually run it with single thread also. Like I have explained in one of the previous videos, you should be doing the smoke testing first in which you can test for single thread and then you can perform load testing and then you can go to other level of testing which is stress testing so in order to maintain that you can also perform smoke testing using Casex. you do not need to go to some other tool to perform functional testing you can do everything within the Casex only now what we did we passed payload inside our http dot post but this is again not a cleaner way so what i will do i will create over here one object and we'll pass the payload here. So I'll just copy from here and we'll paste it inside this payload and I will remove this object. So we'll just directly pass the payload. So what we are doing, instead of passing it inside HTTP.post, we are passing the payload over here. Now let's run this test case and see if this is also working fine or not. So go to your terminal and rerun the test command. And you see request failure is zero percent and both the test validations are actually getting called so we can do one more thing let's say if you want to print over here what is the request or what is the response you can do that as well so for that we will use console.log and inside that you can print your payload so what i will do i will write it in a way so printing payload and what is the payload value i will pass over here payload so that it prints my payload directly and then we will also print the response so printing response so here you can print the response for that you will use response.body otherwise it will print whole response including headers and everything just quickly make the correction now we'll go to terminal and rerun the same command so in this case we will also see payload and response getting printed so you see this is the payload and then we have response also so response contains job name id and created at and your payload contains this name and job only so this is how you can print if you want to check for the debugging purpose or if you want to just print it also so you can use console.log and print your payload so now what we have covered if we have payload in the same file so this is how we can make http post call and print your response and validate the response body and the status code so over here we can see our payload is pretty small but what if your payload is really big so in that case what you can do instead of passing payload directly in your test file you can create a separate json file and use that json file as a payload over here. so let me explain you so what i will do i will create a new file and i will name it as payload.json right and inside this payload.json i will actually pass my payload so i'll just copy from here quickly and paste it here so let me change the job over here so i'll pass it like this and now inside your post api call what we can do i will create one variable and name it as data and in order to use payload from a different file so we have to use this open function inside which you have to pass the path of that file so how we can do that because that is at the root level so i will pass it like this payload dot json and now over here i will change the payload and i'll pass it as data and we will also print data inside it so what i did i created a payload.json and then i'm using that payload inside my test file and passing that in the http.post call also now let's go to terminal and let's see in this case when we'll print our payload we will see the role is different so let me run this command so over here you can see name is anjata and job is estate so that means it, so it is actually picking from this payload.json. So this way you can pass payload from a different file also and you can validate the response. So yeah, that's it for today's video. So in the upcoming videos, I will cover some more advanced scenarios such as handling the token or forming the request bodies dynamically. For example, you have a body in which you have to pass some unique data. So how we can handle that in case it, we will cover that in the upcoming video. So I hope you like the content. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.